Ah, hello and welcome to the topgear.com electric awards. Yes, we're here to celebrate the very best EVs in the world right now and what a place to do it. Gridser's state-of-the-art Braintree facility, which as you can see, is open to the public today. Now they call it the world's first electric forecourt. We call it probably the poshest service station in all of Essex. Either way, what better way to celebrate the best of batteries, the cream of capacitors, the peak of permanent magnet synchronous motors? Right, let's crack on because we got a whole bunch of awards to hand out, starting with the one to watch, which is industry speak for just get on and build the finished thing already. Now, have you ever wondered what would happen if you melded the lightweight British sports car philosophy with a very powerful electric powertrain and then gave it to Top Gear to do the paint job? No, of course you haven't, because that would be utter madness. But nonetheless, here is the result. Because our one to watch is the Lotus Avaya. Handy Scrabble score, very handy car. 2,000 horsepower, 2 million quid. And what do you think of the livery? We genuinely designed this wrap ourselves. These green lines you can see here are all reflective. So there's a very strong Tron vibe going on. If I'm honest, for me, it's a little bit showy. I would have preferred a muted tartan, but hey, you can't win them all. Genuinely though, we cannot wait for this car to reach the road, especially after we had a proper drive in this prototype. Take a look at this. All right, let's just, um come to a little stop here. Got a straight in front of me and see what this car can do. Don't need to bother with launch control. We just stand on the... Whoa! Holy <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> oh my God, that is fast. Oh my word. Because there's no gear changes, the shove is just completely relentless and it feels naturally aspirated. The acceleration actually ramps up the faster you go. So that's our answer to question one, isn't it? Is the Lotus Avaya fast? Yes. Yes, it is. And this is a prototype. It's only running 70, 75% of its full power. There's more to come. So our one to watch for 2021 is the Lotus Avaya. And now for the next award, which is best interior. And the winner is not this. This is the new S-Class and it runs on petrol. Shame on you coming in here with your pistons and wet sump. Now, traditionally the S-Class has always had the cleverest, classiest interior, but now there's a new king of the cockpits on the scene and it's this big lad's e-cousin. The Mercedes EQS isn't the first electric Mercedes, but it's the one that matters because it's the first purpose-built EV Mercedes has ever made. Mercedes has taken the chance to rethink everything from the super slippery silhouette that gives it the lowest drag coefficient of any mass production car to the massive 108 kilowatt hour battery that gives it a claimed range of up to 477 miles. And then there's what Mercedes calls the MBUX hyperscreen, 377 square inches of display spanning the entire dashboard. In fact, it's three screens behind a single pane of curved glass, but you get the idea. If you love your jumbo widescreen TVs, you're gonna love this. It also has all the technology. A voice activation system knows where you're sitting and adjusts only your personal settings. And the car automatically knows which wing mirror you need to adjust because you're looking at it. Better still, an AMG version with 750 horsepower is part of the plan. This isn't just an electric car then, it's the S-Class of electric cars. Yes, the Top Gear Electric Awards Best Interior is the Mercedes EQS. Don't worry, we still like you too. Moving on to a man who has no sense of fear and no no claims bonus. Yes, it's time for Freddie Flintoff's choice for his electric car of the year. Now, would you believe our fearless human guinea pig has gone for the Kia Soul EV? Well, you'd be right not to believe it because he hasn't. He's gone for this. Yeah, 
this. Me and the Odyssey 21 would now be going up against Britain's leading, and let's face it, probably only Jetpack Man. With the title of All Terrain Transport of the Future at stake, the winner would be the first to reach the wind turbine at the top of the hill. Some jump. Got a break here. Come on. It's so slippery. Come on. Ah, it's got no grip. And now onto the mud. Come on, get round. I can't see him. I can't hear him. I can't see him. No. <laughs> so, Freddie Flintoff's top electric car is the Spark Odyssey 21, the backbone of the new Extreme E racing series and a very serious piece of kit. Over 500 horsepower, it can drive up pretty much vertical slopes. Can't beat a jetpack man in a race though, but hey, you can't have everything. And here's Freddie to explain why he loved the Odyssey 21 so much. My EV of the year is the Extreme E Odyssey 21. And I got the chance to drive it around Walters Arena for a weekend for the show. And I'm not gonna lie, I was skeptical before around that. I've, I've not driven too many electric cars. And turning up, I, I knew that the, the bodywork was made of plant fiber, the tires were made of dandelions. Um, but the battery is made by Williams F1. 0 to 64 and a half seconds on anything, 550 horsepower, and my favourite driving ever. It really was. I, I didn't expect this. It looked after me a little bit. My driving of it got better the more, more I was in it, and I started turning the power up. Because the one thing about these cars is you put your foot down and the power is instant. That whirring noise kicks in, and you're just, you're just off. And you're going over bumps, and it's just, it's just eating them up sliding round corners and it all built up to me racing a man on a jetpack which was equally bonkers the charge last 20 minutes and i've got to say for me that was perfect because for me driving like i was for 20 minutes and not crashing was was a bonus i was watching the qualifying for it over the weekend and the racing they were rolling them they were turning them over <laughs> i didn't do that so if you need a race driver for these I'm your man. Next up is our award for best design, the finest looking EV we've laid eyes upon in the last 12 months. And the winner is the Hyundai Ioniq 5. Now, if you had told me 12 months ago that the best looking EV of 2021 would be a South Korean crossover, I would have been very, actually, I wouldn't have been that surprised at all because Hyundai has been banging out the good looking cars for quite a few years now. And this thing is an absolute peach. Just check out these square headlights behind these sort of visor covers and check out the design on those alloy wheels. Fancy, although they'd be a complete nightmare to clean, wouldn't they? I have to keep reminding myself with this car that it's not a concept. It's not about to be watered down for production. You can have this car on your driveway. Well, you can't have this one. This belongs to Hyundai, so you'd have to buy it off them first. And the interior, it's just as good looking. Oh. Yes, look at this. Simple, spacious, several acres of screen. And the best bit of all is that the seats go completely flat. So while you're charging up your Hyundai, you can have a nice little lie down. Perhaps with a close personal friend who also appreciates the Ionic 5's sharp styling. This car will charge from 10 to 80% in 18 minutes, which is just enough time to compare sockets. Well, since I'm here, let's move on to the next award, which is for the best electric all-rounder. Simple brief here, a car that can do everything and do it well. We don't ask much. And the best electric all-rounder is this. Well, I have a wonderful electronic invention I want you to see. see, see. It, it looks something like this. 
Welcome to a little adventure. Yes, our top electrical rounder is the Polestar 2. And as you can see, R1 has been, as we put on the insurance form, lightly Tom Forded. But even the standard car is a brilliantly capable thing. Think of it as Sweden's answer to the Tesla Model 3. It's better looking than the Model 3. It drives better than the Model 3. Okay, it doesn't go quite as far as the Model 3 and the charging infrastructure available to it isn't quite as good. But what it does have is manually adjustable dampers which are perfect for reminding you I have no idea how to manually adjust them. I think you have to start removing panels under the bonnet, but either way, a brilliant car and a worthy winner. Moving on to our next award, which is for the best electric concept car. And the winner is not this, because this is an old Renault 5 GT Turbo, which while very excellent, just misses out on the electric concept gong on account of not being electric and not being a concept and being 40 years old. What can I say? We're a stickler for the rules. But what if you took the spirit of this car and fired it into the future? This crisp little concept is a new Renault 5, or at least it will be when it goes into production in 2025. No surprise then that it will be electric. Perhaps some surprise that it'll spawn an Alpine hot hatch version too, but that's for later. What do we know now? Well, we know it leans heavily on the original 5's design, albeit with popped arches like the GT Turbo. We know this concept has no interior for now, and we know that whatever's going on with those freaky hologram style lights, we like it. If you're under the age of 30 and currently asking the person next to you what on earth a Renault 5 is, that's fine. This is a car that is both an unapologetic tug of the heartstrings for the oldies and simply a fresh, affordable, useful electric car for everyone else. And if that's not good design, what is? Yes, our top electric concept car is the glorious Renault 5. Now, the real thing won't be with us until about 2025, but if it looks anything like that, we'll be very happy indeed. Just don't change it too much, Renault, eh? In fact, don't change it at all. Couple of number plates, new set of floor mats, pack of tree ball mints in the glove box, and she's good to go. Can't wait. Right, we've spoken to Freddie. Now it's time to find out what Mr. Paddy McGuinness's EV of the moment is. After he spent 24 hours in a Tesla Model 3 in Bolton, we thought he might go for that. But no Stockholm syndrome here because instead, Paddy has plumped for the Porsche Taycan. And who are we to argue? Because it's an awesome car, it's fast, it's beautifully built. It handles brilliantly. It's also really quite expensive, but then again, so is printer toner and your inkjet can't do naught to 60 in three seconds, can it? Food for thought there. Anyway, here's Paddy to explain why he chose the Taycan. Without a question, my best electric car of 2021 is the Porsche Taycan. And the thing about the Taycan is it's electric, so you don't expect it to feel like a proper Porsche. And then you get in and it does and then you start driving it, and then it really, really does. It's a car, honestly, I just love driving it. Uh, the handling is second to none, and it's so bloody quick. I had the Turbo S, and if I'm being honest, you're probably better off going for a, a 4S, something a little bit more gentler. Uh, trust me, that's plenty. Anyway, it looks good as well, doesn't it? It looks good. It's not too showy, not too futuristic. Hasn't got any daft wheels on it. I say, oh, look at me, I'm an electric car. It's just right. And I've got to be honest, I've thoroughly enjoyed trolling R8 drivers all day. It was fantastic. 
So there you have it. Paddy's top EV is the Porsche Taycan. Moving on to something not entirely different, in fact, because it's time to name our electric GT car of the year. A comfy, sporty, mile-munching machine. And the winner is... No, James, wrong one, mate. It's over here. As I was saying, it's the Audi e-tron GT. It's an easy mistake to make because they do share a lot, the Audi and the Taycan. They're based on the same platform. They have essentially the same powertrain. They use the same box of VW group bits, but they are quite different. The Audi is a little more laid back and let's face it, a lot more beautiful. Now, I'm not saying the Taycan is ugly, but how gorgeous is this? Just one thing would change if you're watching Audi. How about an estate version? Moving on to our retro winner. You see, the great thing about the electric revolution we're all witnessing at the moment is it's breathing new life into old cars. And they don't get more brilliant than this. That's it, James. Keep going, keep backing up. You wanna zoom right out for this one because she's a big old girl. Yes, our retro EV winner is the Lunaz Bentley. It's a 1961 Bentley Continental Flying Spur that's had an electric heart transplant. Now, maybe you think that's sacrilege. We disagree because big Bentleys like this were never about snorty V8 soundtracks. They were always about buttery, whispery progress. And electric power fits that perfectly. Take a look at this. This is the creation of Silverstone-based British resto modders Lunas, who's been ruffling a few feathers in the classic car scene in the last few years with their meticulous EV conversions. Yep, this Bentley is a nut and bolt restoration that's had its oily bits replaced with electric ones. It does feel very much like a classic car in the way the car handles itself, except you've got this Space Age powertrain, this smoothness, you don't have a truculent, coughing, spluttering engine up front, trying to spill oil all over the road. Lunaz claims it's furthering the legacy of the most beautiful cars in the world, and I agree. In other words, it's not killing history, it's preserving it for future generations. And hey, if it keeps beautiful shapes like this on the road, well, I'm all for it. Jeeves, when you're ready. And now we must move on to electric crossovers, battery powered, hatchy, SUV family things. There are loads around, but there can only be one winner. And that winner is the Peugeot E2008. What's that? Bit more? Right, okay, yeah, it, uh, well, it looks good and it drives good. So if you're looking for an electric car that is roughly the size and shape of a Peugeot 2008 and costs roughly the same as a Peugeot 2008, what you want is a Peugeot E2008. Serious consumer advice there. On the subject of serious consumer advice, it's time for a big award. Chris Harris's top electric car right now. That's right, Top Gear's own Simon Cowell of Sideways has chosen, and he's chosen the Lamborghini Shan, the super capacitor supercar. Now, this is the Lego model, obviously, which is quite cool in its own right. Took me the whole of Boxing Day to build this, but it's not quite as cool as the real thing, is it? So this is what happened when Chris Harris took the full-size Sean out on track. It's lively! It's oversteering and moving around! Not only the most powerful Lamborghini ever made, it's the fastest too. Over 217 miles an hour! Yeah, okay. 
this is a very, very fast car. And when it comes to the whole hybrid thing, the Sian is also a very different car. The engine is no downsized fuel sipper, but Lamborghini's very large, very thirsty 6.5 litre V12. And unlike other hybrids that you can plug into the mains, the Sian only gets electricity from its own brakes. It doesn't even have a battery. Instead, it uses something else. Tucked away behind my head, but in front of the engine, is something called a super capacitor. It sounds very cool, and it is very cool. Now, a normal battery stores electricity in chemical format, so it has to convert electricity into a chemical, and that takes time. That's why your battery takes time to charge. But a super capacitor stores electricity as electricity, which means it charges much faster. But most importantly, it can chuck it out much faster too, which means instant power. So when you brake hard into a corner, you see it recharging. And then when you accelerate out the other side, you see it boosting. Clever stuff. As we keep telling him, if he just slowed down a bit, he wouldn't have to keep giving it all that, would he? Yes, Chris was so impressed with the Xi'an that he named it his electric car of the year, despite it having a V12. Hmm. So we caught up with him to delve a little deeper into his reasoning. Hello all, I come to you from the cabin of a GR Yaris, a petrol power car that has nothing to do with the electrification I'm gonna talk about right now. So, where does electrification leave supercars and hypercars? Well, arguably that's the part of the marketplace that could be changed more than everything else because the potential performance on offer if you've got four electric motors attached to four wheels as we now know is staggering i think we'll soon reach the stage where the human body will need engineering to handle the g-forces exerted upon them am i excited by these cars i'm not sure i think straight line performance is a one-dimensional thing because once you've got over the fact that you've gone very fast, your kidneys are in the seat behind and everyone's going mm, from inside the car, you've done it. It's not a repeatable activity over and over again. You can keep doing it, but I'm not sure it's something that, that provides much sustenance the way that a great chassis does or a great steering or a car that has personality. And for me, supercars and hypercars trade on personality. So that neatly brings me to my electric car of the year with a slightly wry look over my shoulder. The Lamborghini Sian is not a hybrid in the conventional sense at all. It uses a super capacitor and a motor to effectively chamfer off a very, very harsh gear change and give you a bit of torque boost at low revs. But the driving experience is absolutely sensational. A big V12, all the noises, all the theatre that I want from a supercar. Don't you just love the way that Lamborghini, Santa Agata, those engineers over there have gone, hmm... Let's use the electricity to make the gearbox smoother and forget about the rest, because we've got a wonderful V12 to have fun with. Moving on to our top electric family SUV, by which I mean our top electric SUV for families, not our top SUV for electric families. I've made my head hurt there. Anyway, here's your short list. We have the VW ID4, the Volvo XC40 Recharge, and the Ford Mustang Mach-E. This was, as the old awards lingo goes, a hotly contested category, but we donned the old oven gloves to extract a winner from the cauldron, and that winner is the Mustang mach -E. Okay, it's not really a Mustang in any way, but it is a very convincing EV from Ford, and if you're angry that they slapped a Mustang badge on the front of an electric SUV, remember, you can still buy a petrol-powered Mustang muscle car while everyone else buys one of these. Right, it's time for our last award of the night before the big one, and our final category is for the best electric estate car. Now, as we all know, great as SUVs and saloons are, estates are just cooler. Look, we don't make the rules up, we just blindly enforce them. And the winner of our best electric estate car is the Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo. This is unquestionably the fastest and best handling electric estate car we've ever driven. It's also, I'm pretty sure, one of the only electric estate cars we've ever driven, but what's not to like? It is spacious, it's in this Turbo S trim, stupidly fast, it's 
comfy. There's loads of room in the back for your e-retriever, like a retriever, but electric. And I know what you're thinking. What is the Taycan Cross Turismo like to wang around a rally stage? Well, here's Oli Marriage with the answer. There is a world beyond Sport Plus. It's got a gravel mode. Ha <laughs> ha! It's got smoke coming up from all four wheels on gravel. In an electric car, this just feels weird. Drifting off camber corners at Sweet Lamb in an electric estate car. Just terrific. And now it's time for the big one, the top gong, the capo di tutti capi. No idea what that means, it just sounds cool. Oh, there's a bit of a crackle in the air, isn't there? Which, when you're at a million volt electric forecourt, is a bit of a worry, actually. Anyway, the topgear.com best electric car 2021 is the Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo. See, told you we were a sucker for an estate. But if you're one of those people that were worried about our electric era seeing us all tooling around in bland battery pods, well, here's the proof that it won't. The electric era has just started and already we've got a 750 horsepower estate that can throw shapes on a rally stage. The future's looking bright. So that's your lot. Another massive congratulations to the awesome Taycan Cross Turismo. And for the full story on all our winners, don't forget to pick up your copy of Top Gear magazine and check out topgear.com. Thank you for watching. And for now, it's time to pull the plug. <laughs>